My name is Phil Manning. I'm from the University of Manchester, where I work as professor of natural history. My work brings me to the world. I'm, I'm very grateful that the use of technology, and especially of physics, and how I can study the world using different techniques has enabled me to basically travel the whole world. I've worked in South America, North America, China, North Africa, Europe, down into Australia and New Zealand. Paleontology has moved into the 21st century. The techniques and tools which are being used by people who study ancient life has, has had a dramatic change in the last 30, 40 years. But I would say in the last 20 years has seen the biggest step change because we've started using technologies such as synchrotron light, which is allowing us to peer into the very depths of time to understand the chemistry of life on Earth. Now, these, these synchrotrons are some of the largest facilities, these large cyclic particle accelerators generating what is effectively the brightest light in the universe. I mean, when we're working, say, at diamond light source, the, the light we're generating at that particular facility is brighter than 10 billion suns. It's phenomenal. It, it's like having a, a super powerful light. You can point at an object and see so deep into that object. We can understand so much about its composition, its formation. We can ask questions which 20 years ago we had not even dreamt of. Now, what is really wonderful, imagine tuning a radio with radio frequencies. As you tune from one channel to the next, it allows you to, to, to listen to different types of music. Likewise with X-rays, with different energy X-rays generated by one of these facilities, we can tune, not between music, but I think it's still beautiful. We can tune between the very chemistry of what comprises the material that we're basically hitting with this beam. And I say hitting with this beam, it sounds destructive. What is even so wonderful about this technique, it is totally non-destructive. So we can study some of the most delicate objects that have been preserved in the fossil record, so we can unpick information about their chemistry to better understand, A, how they're preserved, but maybe sometimes how that organism once lived 100, 200, 300, or maybe even a billion years ago. But we started looking at the chemistry because there is a long accepted paradigm that fossils are just mineralized remains of extinct life and that they've been totally replaced by rock. By studying the chemistry of fossils at synchrotrons, we can show that the actual building blocks which that animal laid down when it was alive 150 million years ago, some of them are still present. So not only are we holding a fossil, we're holding something and some of the chemistry that was generated by that organism while it was still alive. Because some chemistry is still there from the animal, we can start asking questions about how did it build its bone? How was that bone repaired when it was injured? Because there is astoundingly, astoundingly dilute concentrations of different elements that tell stories to us about how bone functioned in life. And it's only at synchrotron light sources that we can investigate those sorts of questions and retrieve those critical data that enable us to understand and answer those questions. We rarely learn from getting things right. And the more mistakes we make, the more, the more I've learned. And some of the biggest mistakes I've made through science have allowed me the greatest um, understanding of areas I'd never dreamt of wading into. 
So don't be afraid of making mistakes and and collaborate. The planet is at a point in its existence that it's in trouble and um, we need to fall back in love with the planet because you would never treat something as we do the planet if you loved it. So I think we need to fall in love with planet Earth again. <laughs>